Hey there, Chad here. Thanks for joining me. In this series, we're going to take a look at a game called Astrox Imperium. Now, this game has gotten some attention recently because it was featured on uh, Splattercat Gaming as an indie game that's uh, worth taking a look at. And it's been in development for quite a while, several years. It's apparently a one-man shop. And his goal in simple terms was to produce a single-player version of EVE Online, is my understanding. Some people like to refer to this particular game as EVE Offline, and I think that's a it's an interesting uh, way to characterize it. There certainly are a lot of similarities between EVE, which I did play for quite a while. What is nice about this is it's a single player environment. You don't have griefers, you don't have uh, to worry about your constant you know, training cues and things like that. But he has captured a lot of the interesting parts of EVE and uh, he, he's made a really good game of it. Now, it is not perfect. There are some bugs. I've run into a few bugs, probably a few more than generally I would like, although the, the good news is, is they don't tend to be fatal. One that I've run into twice is I'm on a mission, and as soon as I get to the sector, the mission says that it's complete, and I haven't really done anything. Uh, I guess that's a good bug. It saves me a little time, and I don't, don't really lose anything, so... You know, I'd prefer that over the alternative where you complete a 40 minute quest and then nothing happens at the end. That certainly would be a lot worse. Uh, let's see, a couple of things I wanna talk about. So EVE Online is known for having an extremely steep learning curve. And this game does have a pretty significant learning curve. I will say that. If you're coming into it without playing anything like EVE Online, there could be a little bit of time that you're gonna to need to put into it before you really feel comfortable with how it works. Um, I probably played about 15 hours or so before I really started to recognize how some of the systems were working together and how I needed to uh, manipulate them to, to move forward in the game. My plan for this series is I'm, we're going to start here with getting started and I'm again aiming this at people who maybe have never played the game or want to see a little bit about it. So, so what I'm going to do is a getting started. We're going to set up a new game, uh, then we're going to talk about the interface we will talk about how the game plays. Now, is this game for you? That is one thing I do want to touch on very, very quickly. Uh, let's go ahead and start here, though. Um, when you first come in, the, the, the big question most people have is there's campaign and there's sandbox. What's the difference? So the campaign is a, let's call it a curated world. It's a specific map. It is consistent. Uh, everybody would play on this particular map that selects new campaign. And it includes a storyline. That storyline has you learning some of the basics of the game. It includes some tutorials in it. You can skip the tutorials if you choose to go with, with the uh, campaign mode. It's not required that you take them. The first two minutes, I think, is all that's really scripted that you have to do. Why would you want to use the campaign world? The campaign world is not random. It, it is, in a lot of ways, a planned map in, in many ways. The system you start in, for instance, has a base for each of the six factions, six main factions. That's unusual. In a, in a sandbox world, you don't tend to see several bases in a single sector very often. You can, but uh, you certainly don't see all six of them in your starting sector. So the other thing, uh, that allows for some trading in the game. Uh, early on and makes trading a very lucrative investment uh, for a starting player. I think there's a downside to that, and that is you can make all the money you want trading inside that sector. There's no reason to go anywhere else, really. And I'm not sure that that's necessarily conducive to good gameplay in the long run. But you can build up a bankroll and then decide you want to go do some other things if you choose. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. We're gonna start with the campaign mode uh, because I wanna show you the tutorials and I would say if you've never played before, go through the tutorials. It takes less than probably 25 minutes at the most to run through all the main tutorials that start the game. So I'm gonna go ahead and select new campaign and it starts its little storyline here. And while it's going through that storyline, let's talk about whether or not the game is for you. There are classes or roles that you're gonna be able to select which include things like being a trader or being a hunter, uh, be, being an enforcer, prospector, miner, things like this. Uh, for the most part, I don't see a problem with those except for trading. 
Hey there, this is Chad, and I'm going to stop myself right there. When I initially recorded this, I uh, had a discussion about trading for about a minute, but between then and actually mastering this and putting it together uh, as a video, I played a couple more hours and learned that my concerns about trading may not have been warranted. What I am seeing is that after a few hours of playing, the trade market does start to open up. My concern was there just doesn't seem to be one initially in a sandbox. Uh, everything is selling really close to its base price. You can't make a profit at all. Uh, after a few hours, I think I'm four hours into that particular playthrough, things started to normalize to where I could see some things that were marked way down and they were marked up in other places. And I have started to make some trades that are profitable. Initially, just doesn't work. Uh, from what I can tell, I've done a couple of playthroughs for a couple of hours each where it didn't work. But doing missions for the first couple of hours and letting the market stabilize and get itself uh, kind of put together seems to be working for me right now. If that changes, I'll maybe update this in the comments. Back to my initial dialogue. With that said, I've really enjoyed the other aspects of the game. I've kind of focused on some other things. Right now, I'm going to play as an, uh, basically a prospector, which is somebody who does some mining in that. And let's go ahead and get started. This, if you read through that as it went, there's a storyline on why we are where we're at. And this is how we start a new character. So we're going to call this one MoChad. And we will confirm that. And we get to pick an avatar. And I'm going to go with uh, a brutally handsome guy who wears some sunglasses. And there's all sorts of things you can do here. Actually, let's put him in a space helmet. That looks like a Gemini or a, uh, an Apollo helmet, I think. So let's go with that. We will see that face in a couple of different places as we play. Okay, and then we have factions. Now, there are several factions. There's, uh, I think, 18 factions total. There's six main factions, and each one has two sub-factions. So Alpha is a main, and then Science and Civil are sub-factions under that. And then you have Trading, and under Trading, you have Financial and Commerce. And then you have Pirates, which are Outlaws and Sovereign. Then we have, I think, next is uh, so Temple, which is going to be um, Missionary and Orthodox. Then we have Labor, and I don't remember it's contractor and extractors and then I think we have law enforcement and that's going to be enforcers and judicial for this particular playthrough uh, I think I'm going to go with I'm gonna go with alpha so I would recommend going with one of the mains and not one of the subs uh, again it's every third one basically you can kind of see the relationships based on the design over here uh, pirates you know the, the symbols are sort of related. I'm going to start with Alpha. Another good one to start with is Trade. Uh, I have not tried Pirate. Um, Pirate is more of just a faction. It's not like you have to play uh, Commerce Rating or anything like that if you do Pirate. It just has to do with the factions that you're favored with and, and those that aren't going to be happy with you initially. So we're going to go with Alpha. The main start base is an alpha base, and that's part of the reason I think I'm going to do that. And then for here, there's several different, uh, these would be the classes. We have Prospector, which is what I'm going to go with. But we also have Mining and Salvager, which are under that. Then you have Trader, which includes Transporter and Distributor. And they all basically, what each one gives you is slightly different starting skills, is, is what it comes down to. Uh, there will be a bonus for a couple of stats depending on which one you pick. Uh, refiners are good at uh, smelting ore, and, and you have like fabricators, I guess, um, manufacturers and engineers under there. Uh, and then Sentinel is kind of the law enforcement stuff, with, which includes hunters, and I guess that's supposed to be like bounty hunters. I'm gonna go with Prospector. Um, this will give me the skills to do some trade if it comes up, and it will in the campaign mode. In fact, that's what we're going to demonstrate probably right away how to make some money if you want to get started fast. Also, we can do some mining, we can do some salvaging, but really we're not restricted from even doing uh, combat missions with this game. We can certainly do that. It's a matter of setting up your skills to build out what you want. So we'll confirm that. It will take a moment to generate the files for the game. That's putting it out on your your hard drive for your save. 
In the campaign mode, you start with a storyline. And this guy will talk to you a little bit. Uh, if you've followed my videos, I tend to be more about the uh, function over the form, so I tend to skip these. You're more than welcome to read through all the different options, uh, but I'm going to kind of skip out of it for now. This will lead you to the first trainer for tutorials. And when I say, uh, yes, let's get going, it's going to pop me over to Jessa Din. Jessa is going to get us started. So for the introduction of this game, I think I'm going to kind of call it quits here. You'll want to play through the different tutorials. I'm not going to walk you through those. They're relatively self-explanatory. I did not get stuck anywhere, except be careful not to click the X. <laughs> if you click the X, it closes it all together. If you need to get it back, what you do is you go to the offices in Biomate and you click on Jessa and it will start again. So you can do that. Um, just so you see how that works. Yeah, so it'll bring you right back there. Let me give you a couple of quick pointers in case you get to a position where you click something and it screws you up. Uh, what I did my very first playthrough, uh, or first time walking through the game, is I accidentally clicked this. This will undock you. And when you undock, you undock. And it is not obvious how you get back to anything. You start looking at this and there's nothing that's obvious to click on and it gets weird. So let's talk about a couple of real quick things here. First thing you would do if you end up in this state is you're going to hit the space bar. That gives you the tactical. Then you're going to, you're, you'll be right next to the station, so that's good. Um, really not a whole lot that can go wrong there. Although what I'm noticing is I'm not seeing this specific station's Oh, it's over there. Okay, so yeah, this is all connected. I see now that this is the station that we just left. It's called Biomate University. By clicking on the different icons, you'll be able to open things and you will fly to them if you double click. In some cases, single clicking might take you to it. Then this is a dock, it allows you to dock and it'll put you right back where you were. Okay, so play through the different tutorials. If you look here, this is all of them. There's, there's 10. They're, they're worth doing most of them. You don't even have to leave the station. You can just click through them and read and it will tell you what you need to know. Once you've done that, it pops them into a, uh, a repository so you can kind of go back and read the important steps. You don't necessarily see the dialogue, but you, you see what it's trying to explain to you more in a text format. And that will get you started. In the next episode, what I'm going to do is talk about what all these do. Uh, some of that will be covered by the tutorials, so you might not even need that. Uh, we will also talk about the actual ship's interface once we're there. One other quick thing I'll point out right now is on your screen, you'll notice these little arrows. All these are different groupings of functions that are kind of stuck together. I like having them all open. I can work with this window for my, my viewport, and that works fine for me. Um, not everybody likes that, so you can certainly minimize those if you choose. Uh, but it does give you options on how to navigate and get to different things. Uh, these are the different services available at the station. You can click those. again, undock here or undock here. Be careful about that. This is how much money you have. If you want to see your character, you come down here to where ship stats are. Little counterintuitive, but this first guy is you. And you can look at all sorts of stuff here. The second one is about your ship. Third one is about your life support. One of the tutorials will take you through life support. It'll show you how to use these. Uh, pro tip, you're going to drop this here and you're going to drop this here. And that's going to start your life support. Uh, you'll buy a couple of things and drop in there as well. Uh, the next one is the missions tab. I'm not quite sure why this is there. There's, I don't see where you can use this space otherwise unless this is open. So I just leave it open. Uh, and then this last one is actually important. It's your journal. The journal is where it kind of tracks all of your things that have happened. Um, as you look through here, I guess we really haven't done anything yet for it to, to note. Um, we enabled autopilot when we flew back to the to the base after undocking, you know, but other than that, talk about the stations you know about, and it literally lists all sorts of incredible information. There is a notes section where you can leave notes for yourself. Uh, I intend to use this as I play through this quite a bit.
to help note trade routes or things like that. And then finally, uh, there's this search, which is very powerful. It will look through all these logs and it will give you information on something that you might be looking for, which we can include if you're looking for an item that you know is out there, but you can't remember where you saw it. You can type in its name, hit search, and it will find what markets it was in. We'll talk more about the markets, the university, the lounge, all that in the near future. But for now, thank you for watching. And until next time, fair travels.